Hey, I want to give a quick disclaimer before we get into the video. I recently checked the repository for FinRL and it looks like they've made a lot of updates. And so there's a good chance that this video will be completely irrelevant. That's probably the worst way to start a video, but I've been using FinRL for a while and I think there's still some things on this list that are probably not going to go away or some things that you still might be curious about, but just take it for the grain of salt that this could be, uh, you know, outdated if, at some point. Okay, so the first thing that I kind of have been really frustrated with, and this might come as a surprise because if you've seen my other video, um, the tutorials were something that I actually really liked. And I actually said, hands down, it was the best thing about FinRL. But like a lot of things, when you're given like a mouse who's given cookie, he's going to want milk kind of thing. Um, this is like by far the like smallest itsy bitsy detail because in context, this is like the, the tutorials that FinRL have are some of the best that there are out there. But it's really frustrating when you come across a tutorial and it's outdated or it's no longer working or it's just not even finished. And I've seen a couple of those things, especially with like the paper trading or the some of the other tutorials that come to mind. Um, I'm, I keep checking back in to see if someone else has figured out how to do it because frankly, I, I just don't think my skills are at that point where I can do it elegantly and explain how things work in a, a manner that's worth putting on YouTube. Um, so it'd be really nice to like learn how to do that, but the, really the only place you can learn FinRL is on FinRL and some of the other, um, you know, channels like mine. Um, I know they have a Discord, so you might be able to learn things there too. But the point I'm trying to make here is that um, with this kind of package, there's sort of a the smaller the community that's using it, and there's even a smaller amount of people who are putting out tutorials there for people to learn. So just be aware that there is going to be a learning curve. And if there's a tutorial that you come across that hasn't been fixed or updated or something, it can be really hard to debug it and try to figure out how it works because there's sort of this weird place where you need guidance to figure out how to get something to work, but the only guidance you have is the tutorial. So you're kind of caught in this feed in this like infinite loop of trying to learn something, but not having the resources to learn it. So you don't know what you need to do in order to figure out how to fix the learning material. Anyway, um, it's a very tiny complaint because, um, like I said, there's really not a whole lot of reinforcement learning guides out there for investing in finance. Um, you either have to get a book on like Wiley, um, the O'Reilly series, excuse me, or you go to like GitHub and look at what other people are doing. The second complaint is that there are like FX and futures and crypto environments, but like, I don't know, it's probably just me, but I struggle to actually get them to work. And I kind of wish that there were, and like for the crypto environment, I'm not exactly sure what the difference is between like a stock environment versus a crypto environment. And I'm not even quite sure with some of the others too, for like, for instance, the FX, it's still like an open, high, low, close um, volume setup. So if that's the data frame, really the only difference in the environments might be like the reward structure or something like that. I'm not quite sure. And it's not, um, it's not easy to pinpoint like what the difference is between certain different environments other than that you're trading a different asset class you would expect like with the futures uh that it should be able to bring in like contract data but i still struggle to get that to work and that you know i admit that a lot of these complaints are probably going to be from me because i'm not dedicating enough time um to learn to figure it out or to ask questions from people to figure it out. But nevertheless, I'm talking about it because maybe there are people out there who have a similar experience or who 
um, could help guide me in a direction where uh, I could just get past these barriers that I'm having in my learning. Um, so that's sort of the motivation behind this video. But with the meta environments, um, there's just like, uh, there's supposedly a lot of them, but uh, I just struggle to actually get either to get them to work or even to see the difference in one environment to another. So the other thing is um, there's lots of dependencies and it's kind of a bloated install. And honestly, like there's probably no way of getting around this because there's a lot of things that you do need to install in order for something like this to work, like reinforcement learning is a pretty complex, robust system of training a machine. So in order to do that, it makes sense that you would need to install a lot of different packages coming from different places. Um, and it's actually honestly not too bad if you're going on Colab because Colab seems to keep up their environment to make a lot of testing work. But I tried to set it up on my own virtual machine um, on the cloud and that was that took forever to figure out. Um, there's like a very specific process that you need to go through. And if you're curious about how to do that, I also have that video. Um, I'll link it somewhere in here, um, or you can check out my channel. But uh, yeah, that was just like a really big struggle. It was a great learning experience because I was able to sort of learn a lot of different installation methods and the importance of going step by step through things. But it would be nice if it was somehow easier to just install everything you need, especially if you're going to go on like, you know, SageMaker, or if you're going to use something on Google or Microsoft or something of those effects, or I use Paperspace for my virtual uh, GPU. But um, yeah, I guess that's my point is that there's a lot of instances I could imagine where someone doesn't want to use Colab. They want to install it on a virtual GPU or their own local machine, and then they struggle to actually get it to work, and then they just give up. And that's happened to me a bunch. Like whenever I want to install Gymnasium on a local device or on a virtual device, like it's always just a pain to actually get it to work. And those are that's one of the dependencies for FinRL to work because you need gym and gymnasium. Um, so it's just like, and, and that's no fault to FinRL necessarily, I suppose. Um, and I know there are different things out there like poetry to help with the dependencies and, and to create a virtual environment with the right Python um, version. But not knowing what version you need up front makes it really difficult for in, from an install standpoint. The next one, number four, uh, I have written here, no integrated metrics. Um, and in fact, I think I was looking through a tutorial where they do now have some metrics. So this could be one of those where it's outdated. And I'm sorry if you feel like I'm wasting your time on this. I feel like uh, YouTube can be hard sometimes because you have an idea and then you start executing it and then you realize, uh, what am I doing? But um, I'm going to say this for the thousandth time. This could just very well be like my issue where I haven't explored Finarel, um enough to really discover the modules for getting metrics. Um, it would be nice if you could look. And when I say metrics, I guess what I'm more specifically talking about is being able to look line by line the actual trading activity that the AI made. I've seen that in other packages, but it would be really nice if Finarel, if you could just like log some history and then just pull the ledger so that you could actually look at when the trade was made, the amount, things of this nature to see um, what the agent was actually doing. I know that Finarel has other things for backtesting and other metrics that you can pull to make it a little bit easier, but that specifically would be really nice. There's um, some other things that would also be really nice is just like to call one method and just get the sharp ratio, um, get all get all your ratios that you would want. Um, just a lot of performance metrics that I think are lacking. Um, there might be a module, I'm not aware of it because 
uh, last and probably the biggest complaint that I have is there's not like clear documentation for what Fineral can do, where you find it, um, and how you use it. And what I mean by this is you come across a package like, you know, a huge package like Pandas or a huge package like Matplotlib and like their documentation is just so great. Like you could just explore the documentation like all day to figure it out. And there's even smaller levels of documentation that are really nice with a table of contents and they list out each method and each parameter that you could plug into those methods. Um, just something that outlines what each module can do and what you can plug into those methods and what you can call, what you what is required, what are optional, um, things of this nature, because that would really, really ramp up somebody's ability to learn Finarel and actually get a wider spread adoption of it, I think. Um, otherwise, you just go off the tutorials and you kind of have a sense of what you know, but you don't know what you don't know, right? So, um, and then when you look through the repository, um, I mean, you can look through it and I've looked through it and I've read it, but um, without just like an easy to read documentation, you sometimes forget things or you don't really know if you're not like super well versed with software development like me, you don't realize like what you can actually do with it. Uh, yeah, so I think like documentation would be like really useful for something like um, Fenarel, something along the lines of like sentence transformers, um, trying to think of other really good documentations that I've seen. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know. I think you guys get the gist of what I'm trying to get at, where there's like a disconnect between what's available in the repo and to somebody who's totally new coming into it, there's not like a one-stop shop where you can do some investigation and try to actually learn deeper the certain methods that you can use. And especially as it gets updated, um, that becomes just a little bit more difficult. I know a lot of this stuff I can contribute and I've mentioned it in my last video about Finarel that maybe I should look into how to do so and get a little bit more active in the community because I know they have a Discord. The thing is, I'm just not a big fan of Discord, so it's like hard for me to to really get involved on that level, but I, I should I should still try. And like I said, a lot of it might be outdated, but let me know what kind of things you've struggled with, Finarel, what kind of things that you would like clarification on. Um, this is sort of my list of things that if you guys in the community could help me with, um, you know, I would greatly appreciate it. And um, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video. Bye.